very much indeed, and welcome back to Regrets, where we're talking to a lady who was once the envy of just about every teenage girl in Britain. She's, of course, Cynthia Lennon. Cynthia, we were talking just uh, before the break about um, the emergence of Yoko Ono uh, into your life and into, into John's life. Um, then, of course, came the separation, which, by all accounts, was fairly acrimonious, wasn't it? Not really. Was no. it not? No, if you read the newspapers, you don't believe everything you read in no, the sure. newspaper. No, it wasn't that acrimonious. It was uh, virtually a non-event, as far as uh, John and I were concerned, because we had very little to do with each other. So it wasn't really acrimonious, no. Mm. So where's it left you? I mean, what, what sort of scars, if, if they are scars, or, or, or what sort of impression has that whole, whole period left on, on Cynthia Lennon now? I think um, from that experience, I've learned to be flexible. I've also learned to be determined. And the fact is that I studied as an art student. I had a dream, like all kids do when they go to college, that one day you might do something with yourself. One day, you know, you'll get there some way. Not total ambition, but, you know, you want to be a success. You want to make a success of your life. And I feel that all that experience has helped me at this point in my life now to, to do that. But did, did you not feel that you've made a success of your life simply by being married to John Lennon, simply enjoying all the pleasures, all the trappings of, of, of the wealth and fame that that brought? Well, if that's what makes life important to you, uh, material world and everything else, well, that's fine. But it, to me, it wasn't important. Because when I met John, I was a student. We were broke all the time. So that material world, when it came, was fantastic. But I was too young to enjoy it. I didn't particularly dine out on it. I didn't particularly want it. But it was there, and I lived through it, and I enjoyed it. It went. I didn't particularly miss it. Because my happy days were the days when I was with John in a bed sitting in Garmoyle Road. Much happier than the days of the mansion in Weymouth. In Weybridge, rather. Oh, yes. What about the other person in, in, in directly involved in this situation, of course, and that's your son, Julian. What effect did Beatlemania being John Lennon's son have on him as a kid, early on? As a child, it, it created lots of problems. I think um, he couldn't understand what was going on. I think more so when, when the divorce came about, when he was totally lost. I mean, he was born into wealth, really. He, you know, when that finished for him, he found it very difficult to come to terms with the fact that all those worldly things and friends of John's and friends of, you know, the house was full of people at that time. When we divorced, it was just Julian and I, which was a great traumatic change for him. And he went through a few problems. Such as? Well, he, he, was, he was an upset child for a while, very upset, and he needed, needed a lot of care and attention. Too young, really, to explain anything to him. But was John a good father after the breakup, after the, di the divorce? He was becoming a good father. But there was a spell when he wasn't? There was a spell when he had to sort himself out because I think he was a bit of a child himself. He couldn't quite understand what was happening to him. His life was uh, incredibly complicated. But w d would you go as far as to say that during that period, for those reasons, John, to some extent anyway, neglected Julian? He pushed him out of his mind, I think, for that time, because he needed that time to come to terms with himself and what had happened to him in his life. But, I mean, eventually it came back, and they were the greatest of friends. So, presumably, on that terrible day, which all of us remember when, when John was killed, Julian, and indeed yourself, suffered a major setback, despite the fact you'd been separated, despite the fact you were remarried by that time. Must have, that must have hit you very hard. Well, I think both of us lost a friend and somebody that we, we had lived with. I mean, Julian had lost his father once already and then he lost him again. So it was devastating for him. It was devastating for me because I always felt that one day we would be able to chat together again, push all the Beatles um, thing in the background, push everything else in the background, and just sit as two ordinary people and chat about our son. And did that it ever, didn't come across. Did it ever cross your mind, Cynthia, that perhaps had you been able to make it work together, 
his fate would have been a very different one. Oh, that's, that's something I'd never know about. If, it's the good old question, if, if mm. only, if only I'd done this, if only I'd done that. I mean, what I'm doing now is, is satisfying to me. What Julian is doing now is satisfying to him. So from all that, from that, those regrets or the tragedies or the experience that we've both had, we're both doing all right, thank you, at the moment, and it's important. I'd like to pursue that with you in just a tick, but one more question. You, since then, have been married twice. Um, do you think it possible that one of the reasons why those other marriages didn't work was that perhaps those other fellows found it difficult to follow John Lennon's act? They, yes, they did. Uh, they found it difficult to follow John Lennon's act and they found it very difficult to come to terms with a, a son of John Lennon, mm. you know, in the fold. And, and their lifestyles weren't like the lifestyle that John and I had had. So they felt that they had to do something about it or change it or make it different. Mm. And as far as I was concerned, that wasn't how I wanted it to be. I wanted things to be, you know, gentle and straight. <laughs> but they will never quite be that, will they? Because I suspect that to your dying day, regrettable as it may be to you, people will never ever let you forget the fact that you were John Lennon's wife. Now, is that something that bothers you? Not at all, no, because those days were precious. Um, I have a great son, and for both 